the title, what I'm talking about, I'm just going to call it Man-Made Climate Change in the Skies, and this is part of a presentation that, that I did uh, at the Commonwealth Club in, uh, in March. Um, I was a weather or a biologist with the Department of Fish and Game actually for 38 years, and during that time, my field work, uh, I started noticing a lot of plant death and die off everywhere I was going, and it was getting progressively worse. I was really concerned about what's going on. I'm, I'm on the ground looking at all of this and wondering what's happening. Well, about that time, uh, the sudden oak death hit, hit California, uh, at least central California, and uh, that was, uh, you know, the big problem. But as I traveled around, I found out, well, uh, SOD is just one of the pathogens that's around, and there are a lot of them. Uh, there were similar problems going on with all of the habitats I was looking at, and it had a lot more to do than just SOD, which got me really curious. Uh, sudden oak death, excuse me, uh, Phytophthora remorums. Uh, yeah, call me on these. I have a tendency of being a, a government scientist to use a lot of acronyms and words that maybe everybody isn't familiar with. So forgive me for that. I do. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> As I was looking around, the tree death that I was observing all tend to follow the same kind of patterns. It actually all looks like solar burning or freezing. Uh, we start losing the, the tips of the trees, uh, the branches uh, uh, get thin, you, you lose your canopy. I, unfortunately, I don't know if you can see these very well. Um, anyway, the, the canopies get thin, the tips of the branches do what they call lion tailing. They'll get a clump of, of, of vegetation out on the end and they'll be bare in the rest of it. Um, and it's it's a progressive thing. Now, the upper right-hand corner of this picture basically shows the, the collapse of a whole oak grove. And, and this is outside of the SOD area. And, this, and uh, again, but it's exactly the same thing going in to, on inside the sudden oak death area. Um, is that some of the trees are already dead. Most of them are losing their foliage. Um, it hasn't been until just recently when we got these last rains that things have been actually perking up around this area. So things change a little bit, but uh, the reason for that is that things are shifting, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I got very concerned with the changes in the plant communities because all our wildlife and our ecosystems are all, all balanced on a normal kind of weather chaos uh, in that when weather patterns flow in, the mountain ranges and the moisture and all the rest of it have certain patterns that they've developed over, over, the, over time. And the plants and animals all evolve to those changes. So the habitats and the environment they're in are really sensitive to these changes. If you change them too fast, you lose species. And if they can't adapt, we're in big trouble. Um, the Lower right-hand corner of this picture basically shows along the coast Fort Bragg area. Uh, there uh, white fur. Everything facing the wind and the sun is toasted. Uh, the, the, the forests, all the state forests along the coast have been cutting thousands of trees. As they're dying off, they don't want it to look bad, so they're cutting trees. Um, Uh, this is a, well, again, I wish I had a little bit better clarity on these pictures. Um, uh, the laurel and, and eucalyptus are both carriers, tend to be carriers of the sudden oak death uh, pathogen. And they cause cankers and, and tip death. And it evolves, we found it on redwood, uh, found it on chaparral. In uh, fact, I think last I knew there were over 80 species that are, are being affected by this. Uh, and again, other fungus, well, I took a lot of samples, and when I, and when I took them in, all the labs would tell me was, well, it's, it's uh, either bugs or, uh, or fungus. Okay, uh, yeah, that's what's on them now, but what caused the bug and fungus invasions? You know, it has been classic that when you start having a, a, an invasion of species, it's because the, the trees are weak. Things are changing. They're stressed. And when you're talking about a stressed environment, you're talking then about uh, a really rapid spread of these conditions. 
as I traveled, uh, I go to Illinois quite often, uh, went, to, went to Arkansas for a training, um, and New York, uh, when Morazan and I both went to make a presentation to the United Nations on these subjects in 2007. Um, and in Canada, uh, went all through the Laurentians, beautiful area, but the problems are the same everywhere. Uh, I saw exactly the same kind of tree death. They're cutting down the trees the same way they're doing in California. To, it looks like, well, you, you want to take the dead wood out of the forest because of forest fire problems, generally. But a lot of it is for looks, too. And then it's also, gee, we have more wood available right now. And, and there are some uh, aspects of that. But all of those areas reported when I investigated that, they all said, oh, it's, it's fungus or it's insects. Okay, different fungus, different insects, same problems. Um, then I read, um, God, I can't even read my own stuff here. Uh, Charles E. Little's In the Dying of the Trees. And what he said was, from the cedars of Alaska to the palms of Florida, from the maples of Canada and New England, to the pines and incense cedar of the Sierra Nevada, the incidents of death and decline are increasing at an alarming rate. Uh, further, uh, another study from the uh, USGS biologist or, uh, was the tree death in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California has doubled since 1983. Stress and dieback have occurred from Alaska to Mexico. Since 1997, more than 20 million hectares or 50 million acres have been affected. And it's more, uh, this was in 2009, and I haven't updated the numbers, and I'm sure it's much bigger than that now. Um, also in this picture, I, I really wish you could see it, because the picture was taken at about, from an aircraft at about 35,000 feet. And what I could see out the window uh, were other, a jet formed clouds and a haze that went all the way to the ground. So haze is a really important part of this project. They're not only creating clouds, they're creating haze. I'll, I'll go into how those work together and what other technologies they're using because this is a, the, the cloud spraying program is only one part of a, a system. As I traveled in Canada, uh, the other thing that's going on worldwide is, is water pollution. Uh, increases in blue-green algaes, it's okay, increases in blue-green algaes particularly, and most of the blue-green algaes produce neurotoxins uh, as well as, as terrible odor. Um, in Canada, what it's doing, this sign, basically, they've closed off thousands of lakes, and people living around lakes uh, have had a lot of problems with health, health problems, mostly neurological diseases. Well, what this has done is that our water supplies are in jeopardy. There's an increase in disease. There's a loss of recreational use. Uh, there are a lot of dead trees. And uh, I said chemtrail skies here, but I'm, I'm going to get into that term here in a minute so, uh, uh, so that you understand where I'm coming from that comment. Um, also, I have a company that we've been using natural biological products to treat water. And we treated uh, a pond for the California Department of Fish and Game. It's the West Novato Pond. It was, uh, it had, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It had over 300 parts per million of, of hydrogen sulfide, sulfur compounds, and again, neurotoxins. When the neurological societies started looking at where are, somebody finally asked the question, well, is it all of these neurological problems, are they somehow related to some particular system? And when they, somebody actually mapped out on a map where the, most of these problems were occurring, and they found out that most of them were close to water. Almost all of them were near big lakes, uh, ponds, and other kinds of water situations. 